Worldwide Church. Thanks for joining us again. We are always excited to have you here. We are always excited to worship God. We appreciate you being with us every week. You can watch us anytime through the week. Just worship with us today. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my tomb. Chill out, babe. I was breathing. My failures I tried to hide It was my due Till I met you You called my name And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness And to your glorious You call my name
Yeah. 
From your homes, from wherever you're watching, we love you, King Jesus, and we thank you for your power and your grace in our life. Church, you are always welcome to joining us. Thank you for joining us this week, and we'll see you next time. Hi, everybody. So glad that you're with us today. I um, want to thank you for joining in, and I also want to thank you for continuing to give, and we invite you to, to give your offerings. You can do it online. You can mail in a check. You can swing it by the church. Whatever works for you, we're just grateful that you continue to support the Foothills Church here in Gilroy. And now, here are some announcements. Hi, I'm Philip, And I'm Gary. We just wanted to let you know that there's going to be a pheasant hunt coming up on November 21st. The cost is $80. You get two birds cleaned with burger and fries. The money is due by November 15th. See you there. See you there. we are in such a world that is changing, changing, changing. We can't count on anything except for the fact that we are still, still doing boxes around the world with Operation Christmas Child. You still have an opportunity to give. You still have an opportunity to be part of expanding the kingdom of God. You still have an opportunity to help out, which we really, really need. We really need volunteers to come and help us with our drop-off week. If you're interested in signing up and helping us with the drop-off week, you may go to our website. It's already signed up there 
for you. It's already ready for you to click on the link and sign up where you would want, like to help, or you can go to our Facebook, and so it's also there. If you have any questions, I am more than willing to answer any of your questions on Sunday, right after the service. You can come out, hang out with me here. I'll talk about all this stuff that we have going on and what a wonderful opportunity it is to be part of Operation Christmas Child. I sure hope you enjoy packing the shoebox and enjoy coming and working with us. And Robin Bronze is going to be reading scripture today. Good morning, church. Today I'm going to be reading scripture from Psalms 33, 8 through 12. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the people of the world revere him. For he spoke, and it came to be. He commanded, and it stood firm. The Lord foils the plans of the nations. He thwarts the purposes of the peoples. But the plans of the Lord stand firm forever. The purposes of his heart through all generations. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people he chose for his inheritance. Psalms 33, eight through 12. I want to wish everyone a happy Veterans Day. And if you are a veteran, if you served in any of the branches of our military, we want to honor you. We want to say thank you. And so I would ask you to stand. Oh, wait, if you're driving, don't stand. No, I'm kidding. We just want to say thank you for serving. We're so grateful that you gave and you sacrificed and that you were there for our country. And here is a video to honor you. So long, long
Well, good morning. Good to see you. And uh, I'm glad that you're watching today. Um, we're sure uh, we sure had a, a tumultuous few days uh, trying to figure out who our next president is. Uh, maybe by the time you're watching this, you will know who our uh, president will be in 2021. At this point of recording, we do not know yet. There's a lot of things still up in the air, but God is still on the throne. So I would ask if you would, let's bow our heads and let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for our country. We know that she's wounded. We know that she's battered. We know that she's hurting. However, you still love our country and we know that you love us. Those who live in this country, we know you love everyone in the world and you want the best for everyone. And so God, we ask today that you would continue to bless America, that you would continue to bless our country, uh, bless our state, bless our, uh, our counties and our cities. And Father, we just surrender our con uh, uh, the control of our life to you. Uh, you are on the throne. You are the, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And we trust you with every detail, every part of our life and our state and our country, our economy and our world. And so Lord God, do what you do so well. And that's bring salvation. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Well, today I want to talk to you about how God wins. And I know that uh, a lot of people are upset by the election. A lot of people are really happy by the election. A lot of people still don't know. Those are called the media. Um, and so there's just a lot of, a lot of uh, uh, chaos going on. But I wanted to uh, preach a message this Sunday entitled God Wins. Now, Technically, we are done with the seven pillars of wisdom, finishing up last week with our relationships, our friendships or associations. But there's an eighth pillar that I'm going to add that Solomon did. Now, that doesn't mean that I think I'm smarter than Solomon uh, by any means. However, there's just some, some things that I was uh, noticing in scriptures. I read the Proverbs every day about God and how God wins. God's in control. God's in charge. And how comforting that is. And so I, I saw this in Psalms chapter 135 as I was preparing for this message. And uh, David says this, the Lord does whatever pleases him, period. I mean, he does whatever he wants to do because he's God. And so this is pillar number eight, not Solomon's pillar, but ours. Okay. And, and it's God wins regardless of who's in the white house. God's on the throne. I'm sure you've seen that on Facebook a few times and God wins because first of all, he gets the last word. God gets the last word. He has the final say. Look at what Proverbs chapter 16 verse one says to man belongs the plans of the heart, but from the Lord comes the reply of the tongue. In other words, God gets the last word. We can make all our plans. We can, we can formulate and calculate and do all these things. But in the end, it's what God says that matters. So it's been said that man makes his plans, God laughs. And uh, Psalms chapter 2, David says that the Lord laughs at the nations that think they can plan and devise and strategize and do all these things because God's in charge of the whole world. Why? He created it. Now, it's not that God is laughing at us as humans in particular. It's just that he knows how little we can control. I can control very little. You know what I can control? I can control my, well, I was going to say I can control my tongue, but I can't really even do that. Uh, I, I can control my attitude. I can control my actions. I can control my tongue, but that's about it. I can't really control much else. And I'm not doing a very good job at any of that. But all the while, God's laughing, not at us, but how little we control. And yet we still think we're in charge of things. Man, in general, thinks they're in charge of this world. They're in charge of the planet. And they're not. And God knows it. And that's what makes God snicker a bit at us. Now imagine how annoying, how annoying, how annoying, did I say that right? Imagine how annoying know-it-alls are to the all-knowing. The omniscient one. This is how, this is why God wins. He's omniscient. Omniscience means uh, 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 that God knows everything. So imagine how annoying know-it-alls are to him. He's all-knowing. Imagine how the do-it-alls 
bother him or must drive God crazy who can do it all. Now, the do-it-alls are people that are arrogant. I mean, they just, they think they can do everything. They can control everything. They can run everything. And it must drive God crazy because God can do it all. He's omnipotent, all powerful. And then how clever must, uh, how the clever must bother the one who sees it all. The omnipresent. God is everywhere. And there are people in, in power that are trying to, to, to call the shots and, and, and they're pulling little tricks and they're clever manipulators. And God sees it all. He knows it all. He's not fooled. And it must, it must bother him to see this when he sees everything. And then those who make all kinds of promises in this election season, there are candidates all over from every level that are making all kinds of promises that many of the time they can't deliver and how it must aggravate the one who is always, always. And that's what the immutable, he, he is immutable. These are the divine Characteristics are the divine nature of God. He's omniscient, knowing all. He's omnipotent, all-powerful. He is omnipresent. That means he sees everywhere and that God is everywhere. And he is immutable, which means that he is always, always. And so we can trust him. He's the faithful one. Now, God is all of these things, but no human is or can be. That's part of the reason why God laughs. Is because he's in heaven, he sees all this. He sees all the chaos going on. He knows every, he knows every word that's spoken. He knows every deal that's made in the back, door, back rooms. He knows every, every thought that man is, is having or formulating or calculating. God knows it all. He's not pacing in heaven. He's not worried. He's not fretting. He's not biting his nails if he has them. He's not worried. He's in complete charge of all that's going on. He's in control of everything. He's in control of everything. I can take a deep breath and relax and not let this election rule over my mind or ruin my peace in my heart because God's in control. He's in control of everything. He's in control of this election. He's in control of, of this world. And he's also in charge of the finality of every living soul. Let that sink in for just a second. God's in charge of where I spend eternity. He's in charge of the finality of my soul. He's not just in control of everything. He's in control of me. And I know, and we're going to talk about that in just a second, that, that you know, we all want to be in control of our own lives. But ultimately, God, the last word rests with God. Proverbs chapter 19, 21 says this, Many are the plans in, the, in a man's heart, but it's the Lord's purpose that prevails. God wins. Again, God wins. You're going to hear me say that a few times today. Now, we are free to make plans. Um, I'm, gonna, I, I'm free to make plans of what I want to eat today. I'm free to make plans of what I think today. I'm free to make plans of what I speak today. We are free. We are free will agents. We can do what we want to do. We can go where we want to go. We can, we can make all kinds of decisions. But if the decisions, if the plans that I'm making do not line up with what God's will is, which is what? The what of what God wants. If it doesn't line up with, with God's will, if it doesn't line up with his ways or how he wants things done or his word, which is really who he is, because Jesus is the word in the beginning. John 1, 1 says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. So if, if what I'm planning doesn't line up with his will, his ways or his words, it will not succeed. It's got to line up with God because God's the winner. He's the one who ultimately wins over everything. Now, God's purpose prevails. That's what Solomon tells us here. That word prevail means his word stands. Everything else bows. Everything else falls. Everything else blows away, fades away. God's purpose prevail, stands over all. It prevails over all because, as I said earlier, he's the creator of all. Now, think about it. If you created the world, wouldn't you want to be in charge? Wouldn't you want to be the ultimate winner if you were the creator? 
If you were omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent, and immutable, wouldn't you ultimately win? Of course. You're not going to be defeated by anyone or anything. But listen, just knowing that God is in control is not enough. It's not enough. We're left wanting more. You see, if, if all we knew was that God's power was in control, then we'd just be afraid of his power. That's all we'd be left with. It's just fearing God and his power, his greatness. But we must also bear in mind that the love of God is as great as his power is vast. God is, is not just powerful, but he's all loving. He loves us. I was having a conversation with a friend yesterday who said, well, doesn't God love everybody? I said, sure he does. He loves everybody. It doesn't matter what you've done, where you've been, what you haven't done. God loves everyone. But I said, but, but don't get that confused with approval. God does not approve of everything and everyone. We have to know that. And I said to him, I said, you have kids. He said, yeah. I said, okay, so God, or you love your kids, but does that mean you approve of every attitude your child has or every word your child speaks or everything that your child does or when they don't do something that you've asked? Does that mean you approve of it? No, but you still love them. God loves everyone, but he doesn't approve of things. There's certain things God does not approve of. And he is going to take care of it. We're going to see that in just a second. Now, God gets the last word because it's his world. David said in Psalms chapter 24, verse 1, The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. The world and all who live in it. So not just everything ultimately belongs to God, but every human soul belongs to God. He's the creator. It's his. The Lord, Proverbs 16, 1, or 4. Now, we saw Proverbs 16, 1, where man makes plans, but from the, from the uh, Lord comes to reply of the tongue. Just in a couple of verses later, Solomon says this, the Lord works out everything for his own ends. His own ends, because he's in charge. His own ends, because it's his world. His own ends, because he gets the last word. His own ends, because he wins. Even the wicked for the day of disaster. That's those that, even though God loves people, he doesn't always approve of them. And then, therefore, he is going to take judgment, bring judgment. Now, the idea of accountability to one God, that angers some people in our world. It angers some people in our country. They don't want to be, they don't want to be accountable to God, so they act as if God doesn't exist. There are Christians, people who have confessed Jesus Christ, their Lord and Savior, who don't want to be accountable to God. They want to just do their own thing and then hope they don't go to hell. And that's wrong. This is why the name of Jesus absolutely drives some people bonkers. Because Jesus made this claim. It's an absolute claim. He said... I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. John 14, 6. Oh, man. That just, that just angers some people to hear that. That Jesus said and declared, I am the only way. I am the only way. Not that religion, not that religion, not that way, not that person, not this person. I am the only way. Not your works. Your works are not the way. He's the only way to the Father. Because he's the way. He's the truth. And he's the life. Well, people don't want that. I don't want to be accountable. There, there are people say, I don't want to be accountable to God. I want to just do my own thing, live my own life, make my own decisions. So in general, this is the way we are. We don't want to be told what to do or how to live. And I can say for myself... There's times I read the scripture and it tells me that I need to do certain things and I don't necessarily want to. I, I want to still do my own thing in some areas. But when I do, it never succeeds. 
because nothing is going to succeed against God's word, against his way, against his will. He prevails. Free will is a gift. We have to see it as a gift. I freely read the word of God every day for my own free will. I freely worship God and I thank God for what he's done for my own free will. That's a gift. There's a downside to that gift. And that's that sometimes my choices have led to a great deal of hurt and sin. And, and I, I, look, I don't want to put you down or anything, but there's some choices you've made that have, learned, that have led to a great deal of hurt and sin. We've all made choices that hurt others, hurt ourselves, hurt the cause of Christ, and we're sin. This is why, folks, this is why there is so much wickedness everywhere and why we need the Lord like more now than ever. The wickedness that we see in our, in, our, in our country is because our country does not want to be accountable to the living God. We do not want to bow our knees to him. We do not want to confess him as our Lord and Savior. And there's some of you at home that are watching that you have, have been straying from the Lord because you don't want to be accountable to him for certain things in your life. It's not going to succeed. I want to tell you right now as your pastor, I love you. But if you are making decisions that are contrary to the scriptures, they will not succeed. It will only bring heartache and frustration to your life. It will only set you back. It will not put, propel you forward. God wins. His way wins. There's wickedness in our world because people have turned their back on God. And we've said no. No. No more telling us what to do, God. We don't want to hear it. But only God knows everything. He's omniscient. He knows what's best for everyone. Not just for me. He knows what's best for everyone that I come in contact with. And when I follow him and when I, when I choose to live as he wants me to live, it works out best for everyone in my circle of influence. Everyone in my sphere. And he also, this is the other thing about God. He desires to look out for all of us. Because, as I said to my friend yesterday, because he loves everyone. If we allow him. If we allow him. If we will allow God to work in our life, and if we will submit to him and surrender to him, he will work out our finances. Even though you may not be making as much as you think you need, God can take a couple pieces of fish and a couple loaves of bread and feed a multitude. God can work out your marriage. God can work out some relationships that are struggling. If we submit to God, he can work out our, our places of employment or our need for employment. But it's about surrender to his control. It's about submitting to his will. God, I want to win in life. How many of you right now sitting at home? Don't spill your coffee. But you'd, re, you'd raise your hand and say, God, I want to win. I want to win in life. I do. I want to win. I want to win in every, in every area of my life, in every com compartment or component of my life. I want to be a winner. Well, God wants you to win too. But he's not going to bend the rules or change them for you. You have to bend to him. Bend your knee to him. You have to change to him. Because he's, ultim he's ultimately the winner. Now, should we go our own way? And this is what, this is what Solomon said in Proverbs 16, 4. Even the wicked for a day of disaster, if we choose to go our own way, and I don't care if you've been serving the Lord for 50 years, I don't care if you've been serving the Lord since you were born or were first able to do it. If you choose to go your own way now, now, or you have been, disaster awaits. It's not that God is angry with you and mad at you and wants to punish you. It's just that if you walk out from the umbrella and it's pouring down rain, you, even if you've been serving the Lord all your life, even if you've done this and that and that and this for the Lord, you will get wet. You will get wet. It's just, it's, it, it is the reaping and sowing of life. When we stray from God, when we walk from God, it, it, it hurts us. Disaster awaits. There's no victory there. There's no winning there. Proverbs 21:30. There is no wisdom, no insight, 
No plan that can succeed against the Lord. He's the ultimate winner over everything. Even though it doesn't always seem like God's winning, sometimes it seems like wickedness is, reading, is winning. I mean, read, read uh, some of David's words. Read Psalms 20, uh, 73. Sometimes it seems like the wicked are winning. Oh, but only for a short time. Ultimately, God takes control of everything. I get it. I'm 60 years old. I feel I've earned the right to control my own life. You may feel you've earned the right to control your own life, to control your own finances, to control your own business, to control your own workplace, to control, to control, 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 because you've earned the right, because you're experienced, because you're educated, because you've seen and you've done and you know, and you do. Some of us really do have wisdom and we think, hey, it is my right. And everyone has that right. God gave us the right to run and control our own lives. But we need to stop fighting God. Even though you think you've earned the right, even though you're educated, even though you're experienced, even though you've been walking with the Lord for a long time, stop fighting God. There's areas of my life that I am still fighting God with. There's areas of my life that I believe I've completely surrendered the control to. There's areas of my life that I've submitted to God. But there's still areas of my life that I'm, God and I are still having a boxing match. And God's, God's, he's not laughing at me, but he's laughing. Oh, look at Mark. He's so cute. He thinks he's in charge of this. <sighs> God's patience, huh? God's patience with us. We all need to stop fighting God. Wouldn't it be great if our country stopped fighting God? Wouldn't that be wonderful? May happen. May happen still. I'm believing that. See, God's smarter than us. There's no wisdom because he's, he's the wise one. And he knows it all. There's no insight because God already knows. He sees all. He's omnipresent, omniscient, omnipotent, immutable. And he will win. And if you're with him, in your finances, if you're with him in your marriage, if you're with him in your thoughts, if you're with him in your time, if you're with him in your business, let me tell you, I don't care who's in the White House, you'll win. Doesn't matter who's in the White House. God is going to win. The sooner we realize this and trust him, this is the key today. The key is that God wins and so trust him. The better off we'll all be. Just trust him. Trust in God. And don't just say you trust in him. Live like you trust in him. That's why this election, some people I know are so stirred up by it and so upset and so angry and they're, they're just, you know, whatever. I'm not going to let it rule me and I'm not going to let it ruin me. Because regardless of who's in the White House, regardless of who's in the governor's mansion, regardless who's in the in city hall here in Gilroy or, or in your town, I can trust God with my life. He's the ultimate winner. He's the King of Kings. He's the Lord of Lords. I want to give you this final scripture as we close. It's one of my favorite verses in the whole Bible. It's Jeremiah chapter 29, 11. God says this, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Listen to how good his plans are. Plans to prosper you. That's not just money. Prosperity is an all in measure of wealth and goodness in your life, peace in your life. It's not just about having a lot of money. Prosperity is having just goodness in your life. Like David said in Psalms chapter 23, verse 6, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That's prosperity. The goodness and love and mercy of God following you everywhere. God desires to prosper you and not to harm you. You can trust him. You can relax in his presence. And then he plans to give you hope. I have hope for tomorrow. I have hope for 2021. Regardless of who's in the White House, I have hope for 2021. I have hope for the rest of 2020. And some say, it's been such a bad year. But yeah, we're still here. We're still here. Obviously, I haven't, I haven't missed too many meals. I can move that mask when I need to. I can move it fast. God plans to give you hope and a future. You know, you know where my future is? Not because of my works, but because I believe that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and life, and that I will not go to the Father except through him. And so I have confessed Jesus as my Lord and Savior, and I believed in my heart that God raised him from the dead for me, 
For me, I have confessed him as my Lord. And that's why I have a future. Will you bow your heads? Father, just win. Just win. I'd never say what, what uh, Al Davis, former uh, owner of the Raiders, said when he'd say, just win, baby. Because I'd never say baby to you, Lord. But just win, Jesus. Just win, God. You win. And I, I want to follow you. I want to be with you in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great day. Thank you, and God bless you.